Hello everyone, this is Pedro from Universal and this is how you write a chord chart. You booked your first session musician and now you're freaking out because there's a lot to record and not a lot of time to do it. What do you do? Well, this is the time you don't hope to rise to the occasion, you actually fall to your highest level of preparation. So, we need to prepare. And a great way to start preparing is a chord chart. The chord chart is going to communicate very basic information to the musician, such as tempo, time signature, key, harmony, basic structure, and that's it. Nothing else. So traditional chord charts are usually written in musical staff and you would probably use a notation software to do that, but you don't necessarily have to go that route. You can actually communicate everything that a chord chart would just using a simple document. So let me show you how you would do that in a simple document. Well, first of all, this is the song that we want to write in the chord chart. After that very original chord progression that is literally used in every pop song ever, let's go to the chord chart. What we want to do is to represent this in a written form so the musician can visualize what he is playing. So let's open up a document and this is the, of course, a totally awesome song. First of all, I need to find out the key, which I know is G major. and. The time signature is common time, 4-4, and the BPM is 120. Well, that was pretty easy and we're already halfway there. We just need to write out the harmony and the basic structure. So let's do this. So the song first starts with a verse. And I know that the first verse is eight bars long and I do want to communicate that. Now I just need to show the harmony. Now for the harmony, a good way for the musician to visualize what's going on is to maybe set out a table or something, you know, very visual. So let's just go here and insert a table. And since the verse is eight bars long and I know it's just going to repeat, I'm gonna use only four cells. Okay, so now I'm gonna consider each cell a bar. So what I want to do is I want to find out which chords are playing in each bar and fill them accordingly. So I can just come here to my verse and find out that the first chord that is playing is a G. And then the next chord I know it's a D and followed by E minor and we come back to C. All right, so let's just check that out. Now, another thing that I want to do, and I'm gonna explain to you later why I'm doing this, is I want to fill this with slashes. So I'm just gonna put three slashes here, and I'm going to explain to you later why I'm putting these slashes here. Okay, cool, and this is pretty big, so I can actually make this a little bit smaller. Okay, now it looks much cleaner. The verse is right here, and actually right now, I just need to signal somewhere that this actually repeats. So I'm going to go all the way over here and just write times two because I know that this whole thing these are four bars that are going to be repeated and this is the whole verse now let's go for the next part uh, and the cool thing about the next part is I can actually copy the whole thing and just put it right here and edit this so let's go to the chorus and how long is the chorus let's check the chorus is four bars long so I actually will come all the way here and just put four bars and I can take this out because I actually don't know if this is going to repeat. Let's take a listen to the chorus. Okay, so the chords that are playing are the same, but the time they're playing is different. So how am I going to signal that? So remember I put this bars here and I was going to explain to you later why I'm doing that? Well, the reason why is that these bars, each one of them represent a beat. Since this is a 4-4 time signature, I know that I have four beats. I know that I have four beats in each bar. So I know that each chord here is playing for two beats. So I'm going to consider these little slashes here a beat. 
Okay, so I know that G is playing for the first beat and the second beat. Now for the third beat, I'm actually changing for D. And in the fourth beat, that's D again. And let's check how the other bar goes. Well, the other bar, this is actually not a D, this is an E minor. And then this E minor, it plays for one more beat. So I'm gonna change this third bar to C. And I know this is going to repeat. So I'm going to just do that again. Now, here's the thing, visualizing is very important to the musician. So we want to make sure that this looks as tidy as possible. So I'm actually going to make this table a little bit bigger. Let's format this. Make it maybe 0 0.8, is that enough? Yeah. 0.8 that looks much better now okay so now we have the harmony down and the very basic structure let's recheck our song and see what else is missing okay so we have a verse we have a chorus now we have another verse and another chorus and then the song ends so actually all I have to do now is just copy this right here and adjust whatever is necessary. And if you send this to any musician, they're going to understand the very basic foundation of your song and they know exactly what notes they can play, what chords they can play, and your session is going to be much more effective and you'll be able to record much more material for your song. If you found this helpful, please share with your friends and if you have any questions, please drop down a comment and we'll be more than happy to help you out.